Hello, this is the mock IOC for the group uh, in the English class on the 17th of October 2014. Our extract is, extract is on page 96 from the uh, very beginning up until still at Oxford and it talks about Gatsby's uh, feelings towards Daisy while he is at Oxford and uh, Daisy's feelings towards Gatsby and life in general while Gatsby is away. The book in itself focuses uh, on Scott F. Fitzgerald's uh, um, reading and uh, look at society during the Roaring Twenties or the Gilded Age and talks about the vanity of, of uh, the material consumers as well as the um, shallowness of society in general. In this particular extract, however, uh, Fitzgerald critiques the upper class society by characterizing Daisy as um, an addicted, superficial consumer uh, entrapped in this artificial society created only to showcase power and wealth. And Daisy seeks to sustain her position in the social class by choosing to marry Tom, not out of love, but only out of his usefulness in keeping her status. In this extract, Daisy is characterized as being an impatient consumer of commodities, much to do with the capitalism that was very well founded in the 1920s. Her impatience is characterized by her nervous despair and the fact that she constantly sends Gatsby's letter, Gatsby letters, not understanding why he can't come to her and that he's stuck at Oxford through some misunderstanding. She also starts dating again, going, as the book says, half a dozen uh, dates with half a dozen men and that she desperately needs someone to facilitate her lifestyle. So she's basically searching for someone who can pay for her clothes and materialistic goods and that she herself has no emotional needs. Daisy is also portrayed as living in an artificial world and in this way Fitzgerald critiques um, the culture in which she was raised and in which she resides rather than her character, her choice to, fa to facilitate this lifestyle through using people. Uh, Daisy's lifestyle is, character is portrayed as an artificial world. Um, it is all a construct to showcase wealth and power uh, through cheerful snobbery. And uh, Fitzgerald uses sensory language in the phrase um, orchestras which set the rhythm of the year, showing that people are constantly driven in a certain direction by their consumerism and superficiality. Uh, Daisy seeks to sustain her social class because she sees it as uh, fleeting, which is shown through the dying orchids on the floor beside her bed after uh, she no longer has Gatsby there uh, to take care of her, so she starts dating the dozen men one more time. Uh, Throughout the text, we learned that Daisy wanted her life shaped, but could not make it by herself. She needed someone else to make the decisions. She needed it now, immediately, uh, and by some force. Uh, Tom, being that force, uh, provides Daisy, and he, uh, he gets her attention uh, with his person and his position, his position being his social status and his uh, wealth. This also brings us back to the point where Daisy is impatient and she needs something at that right moment. Uh, and this is uh, shown by uh, Fitzgerald's diction, where he uses the words such as now, immediately. Ultimately, Daisy chooses Tom over Gatsby, first because of her impatience. He was there when she needed him, when she needed her life to take shape and could not wait for Gatsby to return. And secondly, because of uh, his, his value to sustaining her lifestyle and her social status, she chose him not because of love, but because of what he could offer her in terms of money and power, and also control of her life, uh, as is portrayed by Tom's wholesome bulkiness that Daisy is so flattered by. 
Overall, this passage uh, shows Daisy's backstory in choosing Tom to be her husband rather than waiting for Gatsby, as she was impatient and needed someone to control her and facilitate her lifestyle. The author, Fitzgerald, also victimizes Gatsby through the negative portrayal of Daisy and shows how even though he was um, stuck at Oxford and he desperately wants to go to home to marry her, she however makes a, choi uh, a choice right then to marry Tom as she could not wait for Gatsby any longer. This also shows how uh, Tom is a second choice to Daisy and how uh, Daisy is still infatuated with Gatsby. This uh, passage also talks about Gatsby's passion for Daisy, and how she uh, and and how he focused his shift from being part of the new part of being he shifts his focus from being part of the old. He wanted to be part of the old money culture. He wanted to marry Daisy because she was the epitome of the woman that someone from that lifestyle would marry. And he focuses his attention to, to Daisy as a woman herself because he loves her, not because of the lifestyle he would have if he were with her. He also frantically tries to get home to his love, even though he's already at Oxford and he's uh, potentially already a well-to-do person of that status he so desperately desires. Okay, so I thought that was pretty good, but what else could you have added to that commentary? Well, let's look at the first paragraph. This is a highly positive interpretation of Gatsby as a war hero. His efforts in the First World War, some more socio-historic context for you there, um, really happened. He has the medal to prove it, if we believe him, that is. The fact he's a captain at the Argonne battlefield, Defended a machine gun post single-handedly. Incredible. What valour. What valour extraordinary. But it also means that Gatsby, um, because he's, he's been conscripted, is forced back to old Europe, a land that Tom has managed to disengage himself away from. So there is ambiguity at all times within the daring do and the fact that Gatsby, through fate, through circumstance, is is torn away from Daisy at a critical moment, allowing her to go on with her relationships. In the second paragraph, we get to see Daisy's young and artificial world. Uh, we should pick up on the ironic sense of, um, the sardonic sense of uh, Nick's, Nick's tone here when he's describing this, and you pick up on that. The dying orchids are a good symbol that are representative of, um, of uh, the, the faded dreams, and, and again, something beautiful that's cast away, forgotten about. Um, so, we could discuss the sensory description of the melancholy saxophone that's there to inf influence the mood and atmosphere. Uh, the, the idea of an undercurrent, like the, the sound that separates East and West Egg. It's smooth and beautiful on the surface, but there, there, there's this undertow, this sense of unease uh, that Fitzgerald often presents, uh, presents the reader with. So, the illusions of the rich and their attempt to mask out the guns of the war in Europe contrast strongly to the previous paragraph. Yet they too are close to death, living in their illusory world where youth and beauty will surely fade. While a hundred pairs of golden and silver slippers shuffled the shining dust. Well, this might seem beautiful, but I think the alliteration here is used to resemble the sound of the shuffling, the dancing feet, but also to use the word shuffled somewhat ironically to undercut their supposed refinement, because to shuffle is not to move elegantly. Um, it's a, an awkwardness of movement. So Nick, again, gives us some of his moral judgment at this stage. 
In the third paragraph, we could compare Gatsby's frantic despair to stay in touch and keep his dream alive within the first paragraph, together with Daisy's decadent and careless behaviour. Her synthetic and selfish world is ironically suggested that with the alliterative uh, D sound. Look how many times it comes up in the next um, sentence. She was again keeping half a dozen dates a day with half a dozen men and drowsing asleep at dawn, dying orchids beside her bed. So while the lives of the rich might appear magical, the high frequency of the D sound I think is uh, soporific. Uh, how do I spell that? Uh, maybe with a, an F-I-C. Yeah, soporific. It makes you feel sleepy. And you could even interpret that as making Daisy sound rather dumb, um, which is what she says a, a girl should be, a beautiful, dumb little creature, or words to that effect. Contrast the overly lavish poetic nature of that fantasy world with the blunt, stocky paragraph that finishes your extract. That mimics Tom's wholesome bulkiness, a bulkiness that Daisy compromises with at the expense of Gatsby. See here how Fitzgerald uses the syntax to describe the sense of hopelessness. There was a wholesome bulkiness about his person, and Daisy was flattered. Doubtless there was a struggle and a certain relief. The letter reached Gatsby while he was still at Oxford. Syntax shortened, then, like nails in the coffin of Gatsby's metaphorical dream. His fate is sealed. His love for Daisy, we might even hint at his later death, um, in the novel. 